Welcome to the ISS and this discussion on Japan and the United Kingdom as strategic partners towards further cooperation in the defense field. Uh, it's a great uh, pleasure for us also to uh, welcome Minister Minoru Kihara, Parliamentary Vice Minister of Defense uh, of Japan, to Arundel House for, I think, his uh, first visit to the ISS. I hope uh, the first uh, of many. He has literally just stepped off a plane and so he's being very uh, game in uh, making uh, his first appointment here in the form of a, uh, a public address that is going to be live uh, stream. That's not a risk that I would take, so he's to be commended uh, on that purposes. Um, this, uh, this is uh, uh, a timely uh, 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 discussion of this subject, not least because in the last week, uh, the United Kingdom and the Japanese government have issued um, a, a joint statement that makes clear uh, the appetite of both sides for further collaboration in the defense field, uh, not just bilaterally in terms of various forms of support to each other's uh, defense forces, but also in addressing a number of global security issues ranging from cyber to terrorism to uh, the challenge of non-proliferation. And that joint statement uh, grew out of the visit uh, this week of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to uh, the United Kingdom for consultations with David um, Cameron. And in that context, uh, the ISS is very pleased that uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will be the opening keynote uh, speaker on the 30th of May at the ISS annual uh, Shangri-La Dialogue, the Asian Security um, Summit. And uh, we expect him to uh, dwell in that talk on uh, the new activism in Japanese diplomacy, Japan's strategic posture, and of course, the conduct of major relationships such as those with China and the United uh, States. Uh, so I hope that those are also themes that we can perhaps touch on in the question and answer uh, portion of this talk. Uh, the minister is going to be making uh, his prepared remarks uh, in English, and then with your indulgence, uh, the question and answer session will be handled uh, by way of uh, consecutive interpretation so that the minister can be as precise as possible uh, in giving you uh, responses to the questions that you might have for him. So uh, with that uh, preamble, um, Minister, welcome again. And could I please invite you to uh, address us from the, from the lectern initially. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> I'm Kihara Minoru. Minoru Kihara, introduced by uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ward. This is my first, very first time to deliver a speech overseas. So this is a very first time to deliver a speech overseas. And I am very delightful to be here to have a to have a speech in front of the prestigious think tank IISS today. And I'm just I am very honored to be here to to make my debut to the scene of uh, uh, global defense in and Security Society here, here in IISS. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Ward and also uh, staff organizing this uh, venue. And from now on, I would like to make a speech in English. In the year of 2011, the Great East Japan earthquake struck Tohoku region, you know, northern part of Japan. Taking this opportunity, I would like to express my sincere appreciation again for your great support for this disaster, such as dispatching rescue team and such dogs and pro providing water, food, and radioactive protection goods. Thanks to your support, the restoration in the devastated areas has been developed step by step in terms of economy. The effect of the abenomics 
which consists of what Prime Minister Abe called three arrows, bold monetary relaxation, flexible application of fiscal stimulus, and a growth, growth strategy to spark private investment gradually becomes visible in the rise of stock prices and increased tax revenue. Japanese economy has been the rise. The Japan-UK relationship traces back to the year of 1613, when Krobe, a ship from the East India Company, arrived in Japan for the first time. Unfortunately, after that, Japan's isolationism policy had closed the door for our relation for about 200 years. It resumed when diplomatic relations between Japan and the UK was established in 1858. Then at the dawn of the Meiji Restoration on our way to the modernized society, we learned a lot from the UK, including the military organizational structure. Our first prime minister, Hirobumi Ito, and Adominal Adom Togo, who defeated the Russian Baltic vessel in the Russo-Japanese War, both studied in the UK during their younger days and reflected their experience to their great effort later on. The Anglo-Japanese Alliance signed in uh, 1902 and lasted for 20 years really deepened our bilateral relationship, not only in the military cooperation, but also cultural exchange, exchanges. Then, Japan went through the defeat in the World War II, but after Japan and the UK normalized the relations in 1951. Both countries have been deep, deepening our friendship again. Our current crown prince, His Imperial Highness Naruhito, has also studied at Oxford University in 1980s, which I think shows our friendly relationship. In 1213, which marked the 400th anniversary of Japan-UK relations, we saw drastic developments in the defense cooperation. Both governments concluded Japan-UK information security protection agreements and framework agreement for the joint development of defense equipment. There have been frequent high-level reciprocal visit between Japan and the UK. We are now working full-fledged on what kind of menus we are going to demonstrate. Regarding myself, I have facilitated a conference on the opportunity of your Chief of Defense Staff Horton's visit last month in Tokyo, following another conference also initiated by Lucy upon the presence of his Royal Highness Andrew last set September. My political goal is to keep Japan an exceptional world-class country with national and personal independence, robust efforts in the fields of defense, security, and education are indispensable to realize this goal. Superb nation cannot be built without superb people and education is what makes excellent talents. Our educational 
standard is highly evaluated globally, and we will still take it the higher level. Education should be something that it is encourage people to get matured as an independent person and to have the pride for its own country. It is what I would like to materialize in educational field. And now, I would like to move to today's main subject, defense policy and cooperation, since I am here as Japan's parliamentary vice minister of defense uh, in the Abe cabinet. A nation is only built on the robust route of defense, which leads to grow the thick tank, thick trunk, and uh, bright leaves, and to make flowers bloom. Without its defense, a nation cannot exist. There are no first-class nations which neglect its defense. On the other hand, you cannot make your nation first class by only pursuing its defense. Then, what are the requirements for a first class nation? You can pick up various index as such, uh, such as economy and culture, but I think you can be told as first class when you gain trust and respect among international community. And I believe you can gradually gain such trust and respect while you keep committed to the international society in a tangible manner as one of the stakeholders. In today's global security environment, security threats such as WMDs and terrorism and risk to the stable use of global commons such as ocean, outer space, and cyberspace have become higher. Under these circumstances, we have to cooperate with international society and play more proactive role for the peaceful and stable world. In other words, we should contribute more actively in the security aspect. This is Abe administration's policy of the proactive contribution for peace based upon the principle of international cooperation. Japan self-defense forces conducted the relief operation with the strength of 1,200 personnel the largest number ever to the Philippines devastated by the Typhoon Haiyan last November. Also, JSDF aircraft uh, conducted the search operation for the missing Malaysia jetliner last month and April. These operations are in accordance with the policy of proactive contribution for peace. A proactive contribution for peace based upon the principle of the international cooperation is a fundamental concept of our national security strategy, NSS, which was drafted for the first time by the government of Japan last year. Also, based upon the NSS, our government also drafted the new national defense program guidelines and midterm defense program last year. So to speak, the last year opened a new page in our security and defense policy. Under the concept of proactive contribution for peace, the NSS has set the fundamental principle of national security, which is to achieve the security of Japan, as well as peace and stability in the Asia Pacific region and to contribute even more proactivity, proactivity, proactivity 
in securing peace, stability, and prosperity of the international community. In the new defense guidelines, we are proposing the idea of dynamic joint defense force. As a defense force, we need to build. As you can see, the nuclear and missile development by North Korea and the rapid expansion and intensification of Chinese activities in waters and airspace, the security environment surrounding Japan has been more severe, while the number of situations that requires the SDF responses increases, and the periods of operations are prolonged. The concept of dynamic joint defense force is that given the situation I mentioned as before, uh, we aim at more effective defense posture by securing necessary and sufficient quality and quantity of defense forces which support operations and by using joint operations thoroughly to be able to conduct a diverse range of activities seamlessly as well as flexibly. In this April, based upon the INSS, the government of Japan approved the three principles on transfer of defense equipment and technology. As a re replacement of so-called three principles on arms export. The new principles are one of the examples which may materialize our fundamental idea of national security, that is proactive contribution for peace. The new principle further clarify the concrete criteria, procedures, and restraint on the transfer of the defense equipment in a transparent manner with maintaining the basic philosophy as a peace-loving nation which conforms, conforms to the UN Charter and the course it has taken as a peace-loving nation. Under these principles, with the appropriate overseas transfer of defense equipment and technology, we would like to further contribute to the peace and international cooperation. Also, through active promotion of defense equipment and technology cooperation with partner countries, we would like to proactively promote necessary measures to maintain regional peace and stability and defend our own country. <coughs> Next, I would like to say a few words about the right of collective self-defense. In the new security environment, in order to maintain peace and security, we will study and discuss between the government and the ruling parties how our legal framework should be, including the right of collective self-defense. However, it should be noted that Prime Minister Abe has expressed its view that Japan must never wage a war, war again. This is my conviction based on the severe remorse for the past. I have also made a bridge that we must build an age which is free from the sufferings by the devastation of war. Japan must be a country which joins hands with friends in Asia and friends around the world to realize peace of the entire world. In any case, I would like to emphasize that our stance has never been changed. 
which aims at our own defense and peace and stability in the region, as well as international society cooperating with relevant countries. As such, the Abe administra administration is promoting various measures in defense and security field. However, it is impossible to accomplish something above its capability with its limited budget. Also, it is obviously extremely difficult to deal with international security challenges by acting alone. Then, what becomes important is security cooperation with relevant countries. In order to deal with regional and global security challenges and secure our security and prosperity, Japanese government needs to develop multilateral and bilateral cooperation and exchanges with the continuous Japan-US alliance. Among them, we feel Japan-UK cooperation is extremely important. Both Japan and the UK are allied with the United States respectively and are sharing fundamental values, values such as uh, democracy, which gives us common ground to gain same understanding to deal with various security challenges. As I mentioned before, the two countries have a long history of relationship. Furthermore, we have a lot in common. For example, we both have imperial or royal family, and we are both maritime nation. Above all, the UK is a great power which has huge global influence. At the same time, I take pride in Japan, which has strong economy, high technology standard, and valuable national character that is sincerely and respect for trust. There is robust relationship between Japan and the US based upon the alliance. So is between the UK and the US. Now it is time to strengthen trans-Eurasia relationship, which means Japan-UK relationship. In addition to Trans-Pacific, Japan, US, and Trans-Atlantic, UK, US ones. I think the Trans-Eurasia relationship, which can also deepen Japan, UK, US trilateral partnership, is indispensable under current security environment with lots of global challenges. It may not widely be known that our defense cooperation has already been developing at various levels. A clear example is seen in the operational field such as disaster relief operations. As I mentioned earlier, in responding to the disaster in the Philippines caused by the Typhoon Haiyan last November, UK aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious and Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force escort ship Ise mutually dispatched liaison officers in an expeditious manner which facilitated the rescue operation. Until very recently, both countries also conducted the search operation for missing Malaysia jetliner. In addition, Japan and the UK have also been involved in the anti-piracy operation off the coast of Somalia and in the Gulf of Aden, as well as the peacekeeping operation in South Sudan. 
it is quite natural to see that Japan and the UK, two friendly maritime countries, are engaged in the anti-piracy operation together. You can also see the Japan-UK cooperation getting into action in the field of defense equipment and technology. July last year, both governments signed the framework on the joint development of defense equipment. And as a first specific case, Japan-UK joint study on the biochemical technology for protection gear has started. Now, discussion to form next cooperation cases have been frequently made at the working level. We should like to keep our discussion to find possible areas of cooperation. Do you feel that Japan is far away from the UK? In terms of actual distance, the answer is yes. But cybersecurity issue doesn't make me so think so. If Japan got cyber attacks and its information infrastructure got paralyzed, serious impacts would be simultaneously spread around the world, including the UK and vice versa. Stable and effective use of cyberspace is a new challenge that both countries are facing. Therefore, there is a huge potential for cooperation in this field. I understand that your government has been getting actively involved in the efforts in the cyber field, such as by hosting the London conference regarding cyberspace three years ago. It is important to respond in the unified format at the government level. And Japanese government has been promoting efforts at inter-ministries agencies level with the cabinet secretariat playing a central role. In September 12, 2012, Japan Ministry of Defense drafted cyberspace policy, policy guideline. We have been conducted comprehensive consideration at the Cyber Policy Committee to improve MOD SDF capabilities against cyber attacks. In this March, we established Cyber Defense Unit. With the Cyber Defense Unit being a centerpiece, we are going to enhance our capabilities, including human resources development and build up of training environment. Regarding Japan-UK cyber cooperation, the first Japan-UK cyber dialogue was held in June 12, 2012. And we discuss our efforts on cybersecurity widely among relevant ministers and agencies, including the issue of international norms. Defense authorities of the two countries are also holding meetings and discussions on the way ahead. We would like to keep the efforts to strengthen our cooperation in the cyber field. Besides, there is another global security issue that cannot be left behind, which is outspace. The significance of the use of outer space has been increasing in the view of strengthening information collection and ISR and securing communication tools. On the other hand, there are risks which could hinder sustainable and stable use of outer space, such as the increase of space debris 
and development of ASAT weapons. JMOD would like to accelerate our efforts to secure the stable use of outer space in addition to improving the capability of C4ISR through communication utilization of artificial satellite. We would like to keep making our efforts to consider and find the possibility on Japan-UK cooperation in this space field. In order to deal with global security challenges, our bilateral cooperation field and common areas of activity will be further expanded. I'm certain that Japan-UK strategic cooperation to overcome global security challenges such as international peace cooperation, counterterrorism, anti-piracy, and cyber security will bring benefit not only to our countries but to entire international society. As you are all aware of, after the Japan-UK Prime Ministerial Summit, the Japan-UK joint statement was announced yesterday. In the security field, we decided to develop a comprehensive framework for our future collaboration, including negotiations on an AXA acquisition and cross-servicing agreement. I think the announcement released when Japan and the UK just started the new step after celebrating 400th anniversary of the relationship last year represents the bright future of Japan-UK relations. In order to strengthen our involving strategic partnership toward the new era, I am determined to promote our relations further through expanding our defense cooperation and exchanges at the wide range of levels. I will contribute myself to the global peace and stability with you. Last but not least, I'd like to thank everyone present here again, and should you like to place an easy portal to Japanese security and defense, please, please feel free to utilize me for information, assistance, thoughts, suggestions, and others. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Minister, thank you very much for a very wide-ranging and useful um, presentation. And I'm sure that it will stimulate questions on some of the, the key points that you raised regarding Japanese policy on defense transfers, uh, developments in respect of um, security uh, cooperation and on the notions of uh, collective uh, self-defense, uh, the notion of uh, the requirement of a trans-Eurasian uh, geopolitical construct, um, uh, on cyber, on the questions of, of outer space, and many more. If you'd like to ask a question, please uh, catch my eye and then wait for the microphone to reach you and identify yourself. Um, Nigel Inkster, please, from second row. Thank you. Nigel Inkster, Director of Transnational Threats and Political Risk uh, here at IISS. Minister, thank you very much for a very wide-ranging uh, presentation. I particularly um, appreciate the, the, the detail that you went into in respect of cyber security. And I would like to ask you a little bit more about that. Uh, because, of course, cyber security in a military context can be just about defending one's own networks from attack. But it's also possible to think about cyber security in um, a broader strategic concept as part of a suite 
of capabilities that might extend into space and conceivably even nuclear as part of a structure of deterrence um, at, at a kind of at, at a national uh, strategic level. So I wonder if you could perhaps elaborate um, on on whether, in your view, the Japan Defense Force cyber capabilities um, should be purely defensive in context, or whether they need to. Um, be more ambitious than that. And if I can perhaps tack on a second brief question. Bearing in mind, this has to be interpreted as well. ご説明スピーチ大変ありがとうございました特にあのサイバーセキュリティの部分で非常に私は関心をいたしました日本国においてサイ,バースペサイバーセキュリティに関してどのようなことを行っているかということを学ぶことができましたこのサイバーセキュリティに関しましては軍事的な観点からお話を聞きたいと思っているんですけども基本的にはサイバーセキュリティというのは自分の我が国を守るということだと思いますしかしながらそのサイバーセキュリティという考え方意識に関しましてはそれが我が国のみならずよりブロより広い観点からそういったものを使えることそれを当てはめることができるのではないかと思いますつまりそういったことは結果的には例えば核兵器に関する抑止力であるとかそういったものにもつながっていくのではないかというふうに考えていますそこで私の質問なんですけれどもこのサイバーセキュリティについてもう少し詳しくお聞かせいただきたいのですけれども日本自衛隊としてはこのサイバーセキュリティに対する技術に関しては極めてディフェンシブなものというふうにお考えでしょうかあるいはそれをもう少し発展させるようなお考えをお持ちでしょうか、はい And if I can briefly add... If there is one thing that seems to be missing from Japan's toolkit, it is a dedicated、uh, foreign intelligence collection agency. Does Mr. Abe's administration plan to establish one? えっと、もう一つ、えー、付け加えますと,、えー、とこれまでのお話の中で、えーえー、欠けていると思いますのはその、えー、外国との情報機関との協力といったものが考えられるかと思うんですけれども、えー、それにつきましてはそれにつきましてももしお考えをお聞かせいただければと思います、はい、あの質問ありがとうございました Thank you for the question. あのサイバー防衛隊自衛隊はあその部隊を編成したばかりです要員は90名です約,約90名です the strength is about 90% personnel. 多いか少ないかというと極めて少ないと思っていますまずサイバースペースを守るというのは、えー、何を守るかということだと思いますけれども日本国の全体のサイバースペースを守るのかそれとも自衛隊のサイバースペースを守るのかという話があると思います。So what, what becomes the question is what do you protect? Do you protect the system? In, the, in the Japan, overall, all over the Japan, or protecting the system of self-defense forces? とてもじゃないですけども、90名で日本全体のサイバー空間は守れません。Unfortunately,、uh, it is impossible for 90, 90 personnel to protect the system all over Japan. まずは、防衛省、自衛隊におけるサイバー空間を守ることから始めます。First step is to protect the cyberspace of Ministry of Defense and Self Defense Forces. そしてそのためには要員が必要です。And in order to accomplish that, we need a, we, we, you have to increase our strength. おそらくどこの国でも同じ問題を抱えていると思いますが、このサイバーに関する技術は日進月歩、もう毎日進化をしています。I think the, almost all of the country have the same challenge, is facing the cha- same challenges, and the, this field is、uh, developing day by day. 優秀な人材を確保することはとても難しい問題です。It is very difficult to secure the uh, excellent uh, skilled personnel. ですから、自衛隊員の中からそれを育てる、育成するということをこれから取り組まなければいけません。So, one of the things that we have to, promote,、uh, to, t- to deal with is to promote the personnel from the SDF. As you know, that our mission is to protect 
uh, our, our defense force is based on a purely defensive. So this is to, to protect our country is our mission. しかしサイバー空間においては守るのはとても難しいですね。However, it is very difficult to protect our own cyberspace. ですからこれはまあ新たな問題ですが、まあ相手発信源を,を探し、そして発信源を叩くということ、こういうことも含めてこれから議論をしなければいけないと思っております。So I think there is some issues that we need to discuss. That is to find the resource of the the original where it comes from, and also how to deal, how to prevent that happen. 日本の自衛隊は専守防衛ですから、そことの整合性が取れるかどうか、これは議論を待たなければいけません。So we have to have a further discussion on how to consist with the the natural mission of SDF, which is the purely defensive. まさしく、まあ、外国との協力ですけれども、この英国をはじめ、米国、まあ、考えを同じくする国々と協力をして、そしてこのサイバー空間を守らなければいけないと考えております。So I think we have to protect the cyberspace with the cooperation with the UK and also with the countries with the like-minded. 終わります。Thank you. There was also a question about intelligence services. あのそこの部分は言えないところもあります。さまざまな事態に対処できるようにこれから新しい問題意識を持っていきたいと思っております。Thank you. Neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please, sir, front row. Thank you. Uh, Minister, thank you very much for sharing your uh, insights and uh, ideas about Japan's uh, new security paradigm.、Um, my question is regarding the most urgent and acute flashpoint in Japan's security environment.、Uh, over the last three and a half, four years, successive Japanese governments have made it very clear that they Believe, including your own, that、um, China's military activities、uh, provide the sort of greatest source of anxiety for Japan.、Uh, the flashpoint is around the disputed islands called Senkakus.、Um, now, the Chinese obviously have been claiming that these are their islands、uh, since 1895.、Uh, and Japan, we need to understand as outsiders what is the Japanese perspective that there is, these are Japanese islands or Uh, there is no dispute because oftentimes you hear from outside that Japan actually denies there is any dispute.、Uh, as Vice Minister of Defense, you are in an ideal position to actually explain what the Japanese stance is. Thank you. またあの防衛省のいろんな考え方を共有していただきまして誠にありがとうございます。えっとここでまず私の質問としてはまあ喫緊の問題といたしまして、えー、中国のお話があるかと思います。えー近年におかれましては中国との関係というのは懸念の一つであるというふうに考えております中でも尖閣諸島に関しては問題があるというふうに考えております中国側の主張では1975年以降尖閣諸島は中国の領土であるというふうに言っておりますまた一方日本側はそうではないと日本の領土であるということを申し継続して主張しておりますまた領土問題に関する紛争はないというような形で政府見解があるかと思いますそこでお伺いしたいのは日本のお考えとしてはど,どのようにお考えなのでしょうかということをお聞きしたいと思いますはい、質問ありがとうございます Thank you for the question. 今日は中国のテレビ局も後ろに来ています<笑> Are we have the broadcast from the Chinese oh, oh, back there? <笑><笑>あのまあ日本の政府の立場として、えー、尖閣諸島は国際法的にもまた歴史的にも日本固有の領土であると考えております。隣国と様々な地域的な問題を抱えているというのは
あのどこの国でも見られていることです。中国は日本の大事な隣国でありそして GDP が世界第2位の大国であります安倍内閣としては常にそのドアはオープンにして対話を持とうと考えております。しかしながら、力による現状,はい現状の変更は許されないと思っております。However, we cannot tolerate the attempt to change the status quo by force. 例えばあの、中国の防空識別区なども、これも世界中が心配していることの一つです。ぜひ中国にはその国際秩序というものを遵守してもらいたい、そのように考えております。So Thank you, Mr. Minister. Mark Fitzpatrick, Director of the Non Proliferation and Disarmament Program here at WS. I'd like to ask about another threat that Japan faces.、Um, we're all wondering、uh, whether North Korea will test another nuclear weapon in the upcoming days. If they do, it might give them an ability to mount、uh, a nuclear weapon on one of their Nodong missiles. In March,、uh, they tested.、Uh, Two Nodong missiles for the first time in several years, 650、uh, kilometers they flew. They're directed mainly at、uh, Japan, I suppose. Questions have sometimes been raised about Japan's ability independently to quickly detect a North Korean missile launch and uh, to uh, uh, defend against it. I'm wondering if you can offer us any.、Uh, Confidence about Japan's、uh, ability to、uh, detect and,、uh, and shoot down any、uh, North Korean missile that might be uh, flying uh, to uh, Japan. And I don't think there are any North Korean broadcasters、uh, here, so you can be very frank. <laughs> 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 えー、非常に、えー、素晴らしい、えー、講演ありがとうございました、えー、私の方ではまたあ別の脅威についてご質問させていただきたいと思うんですけどこれは北朝鮮でございます、えー、近々あ報道によりますと、まあ、また新たな核実験を行うようなあ報道もございますまた、えー、ノドン級650キロのペイロードを持ったノドン級のミサイルの発射も成功していたりというようなことがございますそういったものが日本にとってまあ脅威であるということは我々も思っているんですけれどもそれ,にまあ、そ,のそれについてともう一つその北朝鮮の,そのミサイルあるいは核能力を日本側が探知できる能力があるというように認識しておりますそしてそれを打ち破ることができるというふうにも認識しているんですけれどもそこでお聞きしたいのはそういった能力があるというのをどのように確証を持って言えるのか教えていただければと思います幸いこちらにはあの北朝鮮の報道はありませんので<笑>教えていただければと思います、はい、質問ありがとうございます Thank you for the question. 北朝鮮による核実験の話は報道等で承知をしております Regarding the develop,、uh, development test, a test of、uh, a new nuclear, nuclear weapon, I understand it through a、uh, uh, media release. 北朝鮮と日本との問題というのは、まあ、この核だけではなくて、えー、拉致問題、そしてミサイルと、この拉致、えー、核、ミサイル、この3つが大きな問題であります。Uh, uh, uh, abduction, abduction あの今日私、この青いリボン、ブルーリボンをバッジをつけてます、これ、安倍総理もつけていたと思いますけれども、これは拉致問題を忘れないという象徴です。I think you can see the ribbon, the blue ribbon I'm wearing, 
and that is what the Prime Minister is also wearing. Uh, this ribbon represents that we should not forget the abduction issue. 私の選挙区にも拉致被害者がいます。その話はあのここまでにいたしますけれども、この核、もしくは核弾頭を積んだミサイルに対する日本,の脅威あの日本側から見た脅威という問題ですけれども、それを日本がどの程度、を把握できているか、探知しているかという質問においてはですね、これは実は相手に今日は北朝鮮のメディアは来ておりませんが、相手に手の内を見せることになりますので、残念ながら申し上げることができません。I just would like to stop the abduction issue here, but、uh, as to the、uh, other question about、uh, nuclear weapons with、uh, a warhead. Uh, how do I feel? How do you perceive the threat on that? And your question was, how do we detect or、uh, grasp the situation of the North Korean capabilities? Although we don't have any presence from North Korea, but if, uh, if, why, if, uh, uh, if I uh, in introduce the, 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 the background, how do we protect,、uh, detect, or, or grasp? That will show that,、uh, what kind of capability we have here. So we cannot say, say it here. ミサイルが発射すると、10分で東京に着弾します。Uh, the, uh, ですから、この問題は全力で国を挙げて取り組んでいるところですが、えー、申し訳ません申し訳ないですけどもですね、えー、その探知能力があるないということも含めてですね詳細を申し上げることはできないんです。So this、uh, as our whole government is to, is doing our best to deal with this issue. However, regarding the question, how do how, what kind of capability do we we have?、Uh, we cannot. Uh, we cannot say it here. あ一つあの例をも出します。Just, uh, say, uh, one, one よくミサイルの実験をしまして、えー、例えば北朝鮮が日本海に、北朝鮮からのミサイルが日本海に着弾をしたというニュースが流れます。When the North Korea launched a missile, and they claim that they launched, landed on the Sea of Japan. Actually, uh, uh, the Japanese government uh, uh, announced that、uh, where the,、uh, the so called missile was. Was dropped at the what latitude and what longitude. しかし、それは北朝鮮は自分が撃ったミサイルがどこに飛んだかわからないんです。However, uh, the North Korea, uh, didn't know where their missiles went. 日本側の報道でどこまで飛んだかが彼らがわかりました。それによって彼らはまたミサイルの開発を進めます。ですから我々は相手に利するようなことはもうしないことに決めました。So we have decided that we do not do anything that would benefit for them. IISS member v i p u l t h a k u r my comments minister. The center of global geopolitics has moved to Asia Pacific, hence, USA is reorganizing its strategic assets in the region. This is vividly confirmed by the World Bank, which stated this week the four largest economies now, as per purchasing power parity, are China, USA, India, and Japan, and in that order. Free democracies, including the USA, UK, EU countries, Japan, India, and others, 
should and will by compulsion of logic be forced to come together for further defense cooperation to prevent countries like Russia that threatens Eastern Europe and China that wants to use force against Japan, the Philippines, South Korea, Vietnam, Malaysia, and India to change boundaries in Asia. Japan-UK cooperation in defense will be a positive step to maintain global peace and international law. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to ask a question for you. I'd like to ask a question これまでのアジア太平洋地域での力関係といいますか国力を考えますと、まあえー、近年においては中国が非常に力をつけてきていると他方アメリカのプレゼンスもございますまたインドも大きく力をつけてきておりますそういった中で、えー、アメリカインドそして日本といった国が力強く共に作業していくというのは非常にいいことだというふうに私は思っておりますまたそのような中で、えーえーロシアであるとか中国に対抗するという意味でもその日米印の関係というのは重要になってくるのかと思いますまたアジア太平洋地域においてはフィリピンであるとかベトナムであるあるいはインドネシアと領土あるいは国境の問題を抱えている国も国々もございますそういった関係を考えましても日本とあるいはイギリスがより強い関係を持つということは非常にいいことではないかと思っておりますありがとうございます、はい、あの適切なアドバイスありがとうございました。Thank you very much for the precise advice. あの特にアジア太平洋地域の国々の中でも、まあ、日本と考え方を同じくするまたこの英国と考えを同じくする民主主義であるとか法の支配であるとか人権尊重とかそういう国々とはやはり連携をしていかなければいけないと考えております。I think in the Asia Pacific region we have countries that share the fundamental values such as democracy or rules of law or,、uh, or, or human rights. And I think it is very important to collaborate with those countries which share the same, the same values. 特にインドにおいては経済成長も目覚ましくまた中国に次ぐ人口を抱える大国でありますから。あのインドとの連携なども積極的にしてまいります。India, uh, uh, so think, uh, like promote, uh, uh, well. okay. Thank you. We have time for one very quick question from Wing Wang Shao in the second row. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm a member and a senior consulting fellow for China in the International Affairs here at ISS.、Um, my question、uh, goes back to Japan China relationship. Basically,、uh, when Deng Xiaoping was alive and handled the foreign policy for China, he decided that there was not enough wisdom for, the, for Ch China and Japan and some other neighboring countries to handle the territorial disputes. So he said, we better shelve the disputes and go for joint development. But with regard to the islands,、um, it was not China that precipitated the、uh, matter to a crisis point.、Um, looking back, the way the Japanese government handled the whole issue of、uh, Diaoyu Island,、uh, do you think、um, you could have done differently? Or are there lessons to be learned? Thank you. I have a question about the Japanese government. I have a question about the Japanese government. I have a question about the Japanese government. I have a q 私の考えとしてはこれは中国が引き落としたものではないのではないかというふうに思います質問といたしましてはこの問題に関して日本は別の方法があったのではないかそういったその日本がどのようにこれに対応したかということを見る必要があると思いますつまり繰り返しますけど他に方法がなかったのかそういったことはそのような観点についてはどのようにお考えでしょうか、はい
あの尖閣における領土問題はこれは日本の立場としてはあ,そあれは領土問題ではないという立場です。領土問題はないという立場です。Uh, first of all,、uh, the position of the Jap- of Japanese government,、uh, the territorial issue,、uh, Senkaku Island is not a territorial issue.、えー、しかしながら、えー、ここ最近近年ですね、その天然ガスなど日本の領海または接続水域付近におけるですね、えー、そういう中国のさまざまあらゆる船が頻繁に来るようになったということそして、えー、中国の防空識別区の設定など近年になってこの尖閣周辺にさまざまな問題が起こっています。ですから私どもはこれは日本から仕掛けた問題ではないと考えております。So I think this is not the issue that the Japanese side started. 歴史問題、この領土問題も含めた歴史問題というのは、おそらくこれは双方の国でどれだけ話し合っても平行線をたどることが予想されます。ですから、鄧小平はずっと平行線のままでいきましょうと、おそらく。言ったのだろうと思います。So my guess is that the, the reason why the Xi Jinping said that、uh, shelf it, shelf it is that they will, he would like to go with、uh, parallelly. しかしもしそれを解決しなければいけないという時期がやってきた場合には、これは決して戦争による解決であってはならないと思います。But if we are going to we if Uh, we are getting to a time that we have to resolve it,、uh, it should not be solved by war. So, now, the time that we have to resolve it, it should not be solved by war. So, now, the time that we have to resolve it, it should not be solved by war. So, now, the time that we have to resolve it, it should not be solved by war. So, now, the time that we have to resolve it, it should not be solved by war. オランダのハーグにある国際司法裁判所、この先般、クジラの問題がありまして、これは残念な結果になりましたけれども、南太平洋において、日本はクジラ。まあ、捕鯨ができなくなくったわけです日本はクジラを食べる文化がありますが、しかし、これは国際司法裁判所で決まった判決ですから、守ります。なぜなら、日本は法の,法の支配が行き届いており、そして国際秩序を守る国だからです。ですから、こういう領土問題なども国際司法裁判所に提訴するという方法があります。しかし、これは通常の裁判所とルールが違うということは皆さん方ご承知の通りで、えー、原告も被告も両方が、えー、承認しなければ訴訟は始まりません。So, one of the things that we can think of is that we can apply, it, apply it, this,、uh, t- these kind of territorial issues to the International Court of Justice. However,、uh, they have the、uh, unique rule that both sides have to apply it. 
at the same time. 本気で解決をするそういう時期が来るとすればですねそういう国際司法裁判所ということも考えられるという私のアイデアを今紹介いたしました。So I just, uh... I introduced my idea that if we have to solve these kind of issues, then applying for the International Court of Justice is one of the options. 中国がそれに答えるかどうかは分かりません。I have no idea whether or not the Chinese government is,、uh, is answer to it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm afraid that we are, we are over time and have to end it、uh, here. Could I ask everybody to remain seated so as to allow the,、uh, the minister's delegation、uh, to leave, but not before. Um, thanking him for、uh, a very useful presentation and wishing him well in his meetings here in the UK over the next several days. Thank you.